the hardest part about any project is just getting started. And this project, our forever home, was especially a challenge. Not only is it bigger than anything that we've ever built, but it's built into a steep hillside and whatever we do or don't do, we're gonna have to live with for the rest of our lives. So when we chose to build a uh, forever home, we had to have the right piece of property to do it on. And living in Alaska, you wanna be able to enjoy the sun as much as you can because our winters are cold and dark. In January, the sun just peeks over the mountains for a couple hours a day. You have to take advantage of the views that we have here in our hometown. And so with that, we, we found this lot. It's a steep lot. Um, definitely has its challenges to build on, but it's south facing. So we were really interested to see what we had with this lot. So we cleared it last fall. Once the trees were cleared, we just got really excited about building our forever home. Knowing what we had, we spent the winter trying to plan the perfect house. We measured out the footprint of the house and kind of determined how big of a house we'd be able to build up there. Unfortunately, the space that we had at the top of the hill was quite small, so we'd have to have a small footprint on our house. What we came up with was a basement level with garages, a main floor level with the master and the great room, kitchen and dining room and then kids' bedrooms upstairs. This will leave us a little bit of yard space. We started this spring by salvaging whatever trees that we could, but there was a lot of treetops that you really can't do a lot with. So I rented an excavator. hanging out every which way. We just climbs up into the dump truck with his chainsaw. Wow, I guess I didn't think of that. Now that all the trees are gone, now you're left with a lot with a bunch of stumps and the overburden, and then you have, where we're at, we have about two and a half, maybe three feet of clay that's gotta get removed. And because you wanna get down to your good gravel, you don't wanna, you know, build right on top of that clay layer because what happens is it freezes and thaws. So once we get uh, down to the pad, it's time for pulling out the transit and cutting the grade and, and getting it set to where you, you want to be. Rough in your batter boards and really kind of narrow it down to exactly where your building's going to be. And then we pulled the string lines between the batter boards and that makes up kind of the, the lines for the house and then the string lines become what you measure off of for everything. So we started uh, putting up the, the back uh, footers on this building. Steps out to it are, you know, you got your boards that you're using and you put plywood gussets in between when you use uh, duplex nails and then you use concrete stakes. And then you can go ahead and add your rebar and get ready to pour it. Once we got the back footers in, we moved on to the front footers. This house had a walkout basement. Because of that, we actually had to dig down four feet below what will be the slab for frost protection. Frost walls are pretty common in Alaska because in the winter, the frost layer will go down four feet. If you're below that four feet, it never freezes. There is moisture in the gravel, and if that freezes, it expands. So this is our forever home. We're not gonna take any shortcuts. So after uh, the concrete set um, and you get the form strips, it's really start to lay out your building lines again on the footer. When you build, it's like two steps backwards before you can go one step forward. So much work to get to this point. Having the footers poured is a huge deal and we're so excited for next week 
when we'll be able to start stacking ICF blocks and get out of the ground.